how rude. It's, um, uh, what'd I say? 147 grams. That is not bad. Sometimes it's a thousand. But, um, so we get the green beans in there. And then let's put the corn in there. Okay, so then let's get the ranch style beans. Now these are good. Now this is really gonna um, give my soup some good flavor. Get all that juice out. Mm-hmm. And then put the stewed tomatoes in there. Now stewed tomatoes just give it a really good flavor. And, um, that's about all you can expect, but I forgot to open this potato bag, but let's see, I got a hole in it. We'll just put them right down in there. You know, I love dehydrated potatoes. I have a, a grocery store that I've talked to y'all about before, Winco, and, um, They have a section in the store where they keep a lot of dehydrated stuff like that. So I love to go to that store and get those. Now here's the onions. I already chopped them up. Now, I can't really do the seasonings with one hand because I got to hold this camera with one hand. And then put these seasonings in there. But I'm just going to do them as for, for my taste. So let me get those in. And uh, then the pot will start getting hot and warm. And then we'll have smell-o-vision. And I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what I did. Um, let's see. We'll start with the basil. Um... And let me look at these uh, measuring spoons and I'll tell you the measurements that I used for each one. So, um, for the uh, basil, I went ahead and put two dashes in there. And the chili powder, I put a dash in there. And then, what is this one? The chives. You know, chives is just... Um, Kind of like little onions, so uh, I went ahead and put uh, two dashes of the chives in there. And the cayenne pepper, you know, I kind of like spicy. So I just went ahead and um, put, uh, I'm pretty sure I put a pinch of the cayenne in there. And then the bean seasoning, now I went ahead and put three dashes in there because I really like the bean seasoning and that's going to be okay so okay so this is the final finale here uh, my soup is done and I'm ready to get me a bowl so I got my bowl here I got my napkin and crackers and spoon right over there on the table just waiting so let's let's scoop it up look at that it's thickened really good. You know, you can add some more broth if it doesn't have enough juice in it for you. But, um, yeah, I think that's really good. Look at that. <laughs> Soup's on. Okay, so let's go over here on the table and we'll eat it. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are over at the table. I got my table set. Got my little crackers. Uh, I got plenty here on the side. Uh, I got my drink here. So everything is here. So I can't wait to try it. I mean, look at this. This looks so good. Can you see it? Uh, that's Miss Peggy's homemade soup. Now, I might go ahead and add just a little bit more of 
Can you see the steam coming up? Mm. Mm. Hot, hot. Mm. Mm. That's really good. I mean, y'all saw I put everything but the kitchen sink in that. But, yeah, I mean, I'm going to put some more chicken broth in there, but not on this bowl. But, you know, so it has more juice. Because those potatoes are dehydrated and they soak up a lot of juice. That's really good. You know, this is really the first thing I've cooked. I don't know. Um, since I've been by myself, I suppose, except eggs. I mean, I've made uh, the flour tortillas and egg breakfast burrito. And I've made scrambled eggs. And I've made sandwiches and stuff. But this is basically the first meal that I've cooked. But And I'll tell you the reason I... I cooked it is because um, I heard them say something on the news or on, I don't know where I heard it at but they were like um, you shouldn't just eat processed foods for a long period of time and then I, I was realizing it's like you know that's that's what I've been doing uh, that's, that's all I've been doing because I you know pot pies and TV dinners and um, stuff like that and I was like well shoot I guess I might as well make me some soup so um, this isn't considered processed food is it if it's <laughs> if it's all in cans mm. Mm. so I gotta make sure I keep my strength up but yeah, I, I didn't really realize that I wasn't eating good, but, you know, I, I'm kind of bad about that. I'm, I mean, I, I kind of just go for stuff that you can eat quick, and I'll even grab stuff like this. And eat those, then I'm not hungry for dinner, or lunch, or breakfast. So, um, yeah, so I did this instead of that. So, <laughs> it's all about uh, staying healthy, right? <laughs> but, yeah. I've always been like that. And I love to make meals like this so that you can get some containers and put them in there and freeze them up. And um, then whenever you get hungry, all you have to do is pop one in the microwave. Now that's the way I like to eat. Now that's not so much of just uh, processed foods as it is like a meal you can get out of the freezer like a TV dinner, but it's a, home <laughs> it's a homemade meal. Now, does that still count? Because <laughs> I just heard that while I was telling you. It's like I'm making my own... TV dinners, but I guess they are healthier because they don't have the preservatives, all the extra salt and sodium in it that they put in there, and the extra chemicals and stuff. So I guess it is, even though it is um, out the freezer like a TV dinner, it's still healthier for you because it doesn't have those preservatives, right? Please tell me that's true. Please tell me that's true. <laughs> but anyway, I got a doctor's appointment on the 8th. I think it's the 8th. I've got to go, uh, which is next week, not this week, but i got to go on the 1st to the lab and get my blood work done because this is that 
I don't know, a six month or a year thing that they always want to make sure, you know, your medications aren't affecting any organs and stuff. So they want a full blood work every six months. So it's standard. So it's nothing like they're looking for something that they send me there for. So it's just a regular thing that I do. But anyway, I got to go there and I'll talk to her about my medication because even before this situation I'm in right now, or I just got out of right now, before that, my blood pressure wasn't staying good. Down good. I take one in the morning, one at night, and uh, they hadn't been staying down good. And so she and I talked about it the last time I was there. And um, so today is the first day with my medication plus an extra half tablet of one of my medications. It was 139 when I got up from my nap. But that is uh, with extra medicine that she has always told me if my blood pressure is above 160, go ahead and take an extra half of this tablet to get it down. And uh, so sometimes, you know, it doesn't really knock it down that far if it's 200 or, you know, 180, but you know, when it's just 160 or 157, uh, borderline, you know, it works real good. But anyway, I, I took that extra half in the middle of the night. I think it was like 5 a.m. Because since it's been high so much, uh, I went, I got to where if I wake up, whatever time that is, I'll go ahead and check it. So at 5 a.m., I checked it, and I think it said 170-something. And I was like, well, you know, that's that's a little high. So I just went ahead and took an extra half, and I write it down in my book. And then I went back to sleep. And, you know, and then when I got up in the morning, this morning I went ahead and took my regular medicine at 8.30. And so then when I woke up from my nap, and it was like 1.39, I was like, okay. It's like, that's about the first time it's been that good since all this happened so I have had a lot of high blood pressure lately but it's back it's back in control it's it's going down so I'll still talk to my doctor about my medicine when I go on the 8th and, and just see if she can bump it up just a little bit you know because it was already kind of high you know last time I saw her so I want to talk to her about it, but, so how did y'all like that video I made yesterday, um, that I ain't a bitch, <laughs> you know, I found that, I don't know, in the middle of the night, you know, a lot of times I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I'll just sit up in bed and listen to TV and get on the internet and start watching YouTube stuff. And I found that on YouTube. Another girl did it. And uh, it had the name of the song at the bottom of her video. So I went and looked at it. And I, I just thought it was hilarious. And I loved it so much. And um, I practiced and practiced. And I actually had to make three takes, two takes. And I messed up. So the third take is what y'all saw, but um, yeah, it's, you know when you when you hear a new song, I mean that kind of song is like repetitive. It says the same thing over and over again, so it wasn't that hard to learn. But I did have to listen to it. I want to say several times because I'm not a quick learner sometimes, but uh, yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. But it just fit. Didn't it just fit the moment per perfect? <laughs> it's like, you know, it is what it is, right? So, you know, I'm just easy going and laid back. And that's one of the things he hated the most about me is I was like that. But, I guess I'm disturbing the neighbors. 
you know, if you're in my kitchen and you're talking, it echoes into the other parts of the house. But anyway, um, yeah. So now I forgot what I was talking about. But. Now, me being easy going, you know, my daddy was like that, not my mother, but my daddy was, and I remember so many times as a child that when my mother would be fussing or whatever with somebody about stuff, he, he would just kind of sit up and he would just turn around and look at her and I would watch him and he would just look at her and he never would say anything he just looked at her like there you go again <coughs> <clears throat> but I'll tell you my daddy was so good at not responding and I never was and I, I don't know why but I, I didn't get that part from him I guess but I'm extra slow learner about that, but he was, and he, he always would just look at her, and so I kind of saw that character in her, my mom, where I didn't in my dad, but you know, now that you know about narcissists, it is kind of predictable when you hear people say things, because I want to tell you, one of the Things that I learned before I approached Robert about it, my narc about it, uh, it said, if you want to know, you know, if, if they're a narcissist or not, um, tell them about happy people. It would just take the happy right off their face. And so I, I, I remember them saying that. So we were sitting and we were talking and uh, he was talking about somebody that was happy. He's like, well, they're happy, and I don't even remember what he was saying, but I knew it was a happy conversation about a happy person. And so in that conversation, I just looked at him, and I go, well, you know, they're kind of just like I am, because that's the way I am. I'm just a happy-go-lucky, happy-go, uh, I just don't stress about stuff, you know, I, I don't upset and stuff. And he was smiling, and he just went, I mean, it just like, oh, I just wiped that happy right off his face with just what I said. So, yeah, it's like they don't want nobody to be happy. And for me to say I was happy, well, you know, that, that told him that what he was doing wasn't working because he, he thought he was making me miserable and making me unhappy. And that was his goal. So for me to say I was happy is like, well, let me see what I can do about that. Because I'm going to knock that happy right out of you. <laughs> like, I almost laughed out loud when I saw his face go, boom, to madness. Uh, I was like, you know, I didn't say anything. I just banked it and just go, man, he is, boy. He is, he is. So there was a couple of other phrases that they said you could use that, determined if they were or not you know because we all have that kind of personality it we're born with it because it's part of our uh our, our own personal ego and our own uh self-worth uh you know we're just mature and we learned how to not overdo that there you know and we learn how to cut it off at a uh, mature level so you don't feel entitled and you're better than anybody else. So, yeah, I was like... And you could probably Google it. What you can... Questions to ask a narcissist if you want to know for sure they're a narcissist. But, yeah, it's like, you know... All this time that I've been with him, it's like he's always been rude. It's like he just says things in front of people that's embarrassing. He always um, just acts rude at inappropriate times. Um, 
you know, when he left me at the hospital, that was the second time that he ever did that. The first time was 15 years ago, and I had a log cabin on a lake that I inherited from my folks, and I took him down there, and uh, he invited his friends to come up from Kentucky, but they lived in Colorado at the time, and they come down and met us there, and I kind of met them then, and he took my car and left me at my own log cabin on my own property that I inherited from my folks because his friend wouldn't go rent a boat so that him and him and his Robert my narc could go out on the lake and go look for girls and he refused to do that right in front of Robert he goes no I'm not going to do that I'm not going out on the lake with you by myself we're staying here with the girls and Robert got mad and left so it wasn't what I did at the lake that made him leave it was what his friend did but it was still my property so I was like you know it didn't you know it wasn't about me it was about his friend but then I had to get his friend and his wife and their children they had two kids that were teenagers give me a ride back from East Texas to Fort Worth back to my house and um, but I just didn't know I just thought well I don't know why I did that but I thought it had something more to do with this friend than it did anything but it was like from then on anywhere we went I made sure I had the keys, so I would always, while we were there, and he never noticed it, but I would always, give me the keys to the car, I need to go get my sweater, and he'd give them to me, and I would keep them in my pocket, and he wouldn't say anything, because he's busy talking and drinking, and uh, so that kept him from being able to do that, and so, yeah, I always did that, and it's like, things that you do just to make sure that they don't do that you know it's a defense I guess I figured out how to dodge some of those bullets but These napkins are right here. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but I think it's Jennifer or Pam sent these napkins to me when I was in the hospital or when I was recovering from the surgery. And I'm almost out of them. That's about the last of them right there. So thank you. Those has lasted a very long time. So I've enjoyed having those. So thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for all the comments. Y'all have supported my emotions and feelings so much. I just get uplifted whenever I read about y'all's comments. So y'all just keep that up. I'm starting to get full. Now, I've been talking to y'all for 20 minutes, but thank y'all, thank y'all for all the support y'all are doing in the last month. And, you know, it's not over with because he is out of control. He has lost his mind, and he is out for blood. And it's the most ridiculous action I've ever seen. He's really showing his five-year-old self like a child, I've never in my life experienced an adult acting the way he's acting right now. So, I can't really talk about what he's doing because I don't want, he if he's watching, I don't want him to know I know. 
So there's a lot going on that y'all don't know. But y'all will find out because you know I'll tell you before it's over with or after it's over with. But y'all keep praying for me because I'm living on the prayers right now. And um, I love y'all. So adios from North Texas and goodbye from Cowtown. And I'll see y'all in my next video.